Today I want to speak about the wild people. Many around the planet have been to see this amazing movie called Whale Rider. And it's filmed up the east coast of New Zealand, around the East Cape. And the people there are the whale people. And that name, that understanding that they have a special relationship with whales, goes back through centuries and centuries and centuries of time. There are many peoples, of course, within the old law and the old ways of the ancestors. The whale people have a special place, just as the stone people have a special place, and the water people. The whale people hold in place the voyaging of the ancestors. The whale people are the key to the voyaging. When we talk about the whale people, we're talking to those who have a special affinity with the whales have been brought up to understand the law of the whales. Many of them will also be star walkers. They can travel from one island to another across enormous distances in Polynesia using the stars to light the way. But in those journeys, in the ancient voyaging, they followed the whales. They sailed the whale trails. And one of the greatest ancestors of the whale people is called Paikia. And the story of Paikia that is told to the children is that he rode a whale to Aotearoa, New Zealand, and brought his people here. And of course, if we go deeper into that story, that's told to the children around the fires at night, their bedtime story. If we go deeper, we find it ties in to the voyaging in a much more particular way, a much more adult way, because the whales were the key to Polynesian voyaging. You see, the whales had a wonderful circle of trails. Their lives were lived in the tropical waters of the Pacific and the waters of Antarctica in the south and the waters of the Arctic in the north. Their children, their babies, were born in the tropical lands and they were fed there until they were strong strong enough to go to the great rivers of the ocean, the great currents that travel across the oceans with so much power, the ones that the Polynesians call the long tides. And when the babies were ready to go, then the old whale set off and they gathered as a tribe. And they moved into the ancient tides, the long tides, the great ocean, ocean currents. And that allowed the babies to make their way at good speed. They were assisted. They were within the power of those tides. And over eons of time, over many, many, many centuries of observation, the Polynesians learned that if you followed the whales, you could cover the ocean within these long tides very quickly. So when the whales went to the tides, and they went to the long tides to begin their great journey that would take them down to Antarctica, they didn't make a direct course, they followed the rivers. And when the rivers had been charted, by the Polynesian navigators and passed into chance that became the ancient law of the ocean, the great maps to carry them on their journeys. They could work out which river to follow until, it until they needed to change course. 
and then they'd pick up another one, again following the stars. And they'd follow that for a certain time, maybe several days, and then find the next one. If you wish, these are the crossroads in the ocean, where they change from one current to another. And all the time they were picking up with the whales who were making their way. So when Paikia, when he, he made his journey as the great founding ancestor, he of course sailed in the waka. But he sailed very close to the whales. They were his companion on the journey. The companion on, of the great crew who were in command of that huge double-hulled walker that might have carried 170 to be at the paddles. 170 made up of an equal number of men and women on the great settlement voyages. There were no passengers. All went to the blades to drive the walker when they needed to. But the need to drive the walker only came at a certain place, and we call that the octopus. The octopus was the greatest danger on the long tides, the greatest danger in the voyaging. And the octopus was not a creature in the ocean. The oct octopus was a phenomenon created by the ocean, created at the meeting of two great currents, a place of turmoil, a place where the maelstrom was founded, an incredible place of twisting tides, a place of incredible turmoil. And it was there that the whales were most helpful in helping the waka get through. And yet it was also a place where the whales liked to pause in their journey because it was a feeding place, a place to fuel up for the next stage until they would eventually get to the Antarctic. So in that feeding place they plunged deep. Paikia would watch them the great navigators who followed Paikia, the great star walkers, would watch the whales. But not only that, they would bring them to the surface. They didn't want to be caught up in an accidental clash with such a mighty creature. So the navigator before the journey had to spend time with the whales, had to learn the song of the whales, had to learn a particular song, in fact, which was the cry of the distressed baby whale. And placing his paddle in the sea, he would sing that song down the handle, send that vibration into the ocean, and it would travel far. And all the adult whales deep within the ocean in the place of the octopus, would come to the surface to support an injured baby whale. But what they saw when they came up carefully was the great walker. And then from that point, the navigator watched very carefully because usually the understanding was that to get out of the turmoil of the octopus, you had to choose one tentacle. They speak of one of the eight great tentacles. And you had to choose the right tentacle. And if you watch the whales closely, they chose it for you. And when you got to the tentacle, it was then that all the crew had to come with the power of the blades to drive on through the turmoil until they rode that tentacle into the next river within the ocean, which carried them on. The octopus is a wonderful image of turmoil and distress 
and the elders warned me that on any journey you can meet the octopus. Be it a journey on the trails of the land or a journey on the trails of the ocean. And the octopus can be a physical thing where the turmoil is obvious. Or the octopus can be a thing within our mind that we have to sort through and choose the right tentacle to escape it, to find direction and move on with good intent. So the whale riders were very special people and had an amazing relationship with the whales. They honoured the spirit of the whales. They honoured that companionship. They knew their songs. They saw that the whales were the keeper of these ancient trails. The keepers of that law of the sea. The law that would take you far across the distant horizons to a new homeland or back to the one you had left. And when they travelled back to the tropical lands, to their own homelands, when they made those return journeys, once again they followed the whales that had fed large upon the amazing fish stocks of the, of the Antarctic Ocean, had built up all the blubber they needed for that journey and beyond to take them back into the Solomon Islands and the other tropical islands of Tonga, where they birthed the young, that once again they might follow the long tides in the great circle that was their life. So the exploration of the Pacific, the conquering of the great distant horizons, depended again and again on following the whales as they travelled the great rivers of the ocean, the long, long tides.